Show me the thing! Hello and welcome back to Featured Fan Builds. I'm your host, Captain Xavier, and I'm going to be showing off some of these super cool uh, modifications and builds that people have sent to me. I don't actually have any physical ones to show off today, so we're going to go straight to the pictures. If you would like to have your stuff featured, um, the email address is in the description. It's my commission email address. Just send it there. I realize I haven't actually been responding to people who sent me stuff. I just file away their email with their submission. Um, and so there's probably a lot of people wondering if their stuff is ever going to be featured. Uh, don't worry. I will eventually get to everybody. I have been sent a boatload of submissions, and I can only get to so many at a time. So if you're not featured this week... Don't worry, you'll almost certainly get featured eventually. Uh, if you don't, if you know several months go by and you never get featured, feel free to email me and, and ask, hey, what happened to my stuff? Um, things do occasionally get lost. So I will start trying to respond and let you know I got your stuff and it'll be featured eventually. So let's go take a look at what people have sent me. Our first blaster comes from Bigfoot, is the name that he gave, and the company is The Toon Tomb. Uh, the blaster's name is Grim, and as you can see, it is a modified rough cut with a skull on the front. Uh, and this is his description. The gun is based around Ghost Rider from Marvel, and is completely stock, and is for sale. Can be remade with better internals upon request. So I'll have the link to the Toon Tomb down in the description if anyone wants to check this out. It, it may have already been sold, for all I know. Uh, this was submitted uh, you know, probably about a month ago, so... There you have it. I think it looks really, really cool, actually. I, I like the, the detailing. I love what he did with the handle. I'd like to see that up close. So, there you have it. Let's see what we got next. Up next, we have a blaster sent in by Not Feedy, Not Lazy. And as you can see, it is a modified Sentinel. It's obviously got a, a fair amount of cosmetic work. The paint job is steampunk in design. He's extended the barrel and added a lower, uh, what would be a tube magazine and a real blaster. This one is still magazine fed. Uh, and he's extended the stock, which is always my biggest complaint about the Sentinels. It needed a better stock, and I like the one that he's done here. He then also has um, a raised Picatinny rail that uh, can be gotten off Thingiverse that he's added a, an actual telescoping sight to, uh, which attaches just kind of with a flashlight-style attachment, uh, which is pretty cool. And then he also has a pop-up sight that goes along with it that uh, doesn't they don't interfere with each other. Uh, which I think is really a neat look. And he's got dart holders on the side. For internal modifications, it doesn't have any serious modifications other than that he has designed uh, an insert that can be put into the breech to rebarrel it for Boomco darts. Uh, and it is removable, so you can just uh, you can take it out, though you generally apparently have to pretty much take the blaster apart to swap it out. Um, he wasn't able, he considered putting in a jam door, but it interfered with a lot of other mechanisms, and so he decided it was easier to just um, make it, you know, a, a fairly difficult swap out. And, and there might be a way to make it a little bit easier, but I think that is a really neat idea. And then the, what would be the tube magazine is, in fact, dart storage. Uh, the cap comes off, and you can pull out uh, an insert that pulls out a number of uh, Boomco darts. So that's where he stores his Boomco darts, since the dart holders on the side hold Nerf darts. And last but not least, just for the for silliness for his daughter, he added a uh, nitro launching master key foregrip, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I would love to see it get painted up to match the rest of it, uh, just because I mean that sort of absurdity is the sort of thing we love locally in the Pacific Northwest Nerf Club. So I highly support that. On to the next one. Up next, we have a pair of cosmetic blasters by Greg K. First, we have a Borderlands-themed uh, Magnus, and I, I really like the detailing that he did, even though, you know, it's, he's going for that cartoonish look that Borderlands has, but the, the lines are actually really fairly clean as far as, um, like, the white stripe. Then, of course, you know, the, the actual, the black lines are drawn in intentionally cartoonishly, and I think he did a, a really good job. I really like how that one came out. And then he has his uh, Joker-themed Cam Blaster. Uh, which is an absolutely excellent job. I, I very much like the where he's got, he's got the, the laughs, the ha-ha, only on one part of it, and then there's the blank part, which uh, gives it that graffitied look, uh, and then the, 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 the white and the, the purple are very, very well done. So well done on that. On to the next one. Up next, we have a series of blasters created by Quint. The first is the HFS Space Weasel Mark I and appears to be a um, 
uh, a hail fire with a firefly stock and then a, a, a long strike integrated in as the magazine well. And it, it looks like a, a very nice, very nicely done integration. And I really like the paint job, uh, clean lines and, and all of that. And so I don't know what the internal specs are, but it looks like a really fun and unusual build. I haven't seen anything quite like that that I can think of. The next blaster is the Space Kit, and it is a double strike painted to match the previous one. I assume there's some history behind the HFS, and these are their standard issue weapons, I assume. Up next we have the Barracuda, and it is also a, a whole bunch of different blasters integrated into each other. I'm not entirely sure what all is in here. There's obviously the Firefly, and there's some shell from a Demolisher, and... Uh, then there is some uh, swarm fire shell added onto that in kind of a hand guard kind of design. And again, I have no idea what the, the working internal mechanisms of this are, but I really like how this one looks. Uh, that is, again, some very creative and uh, unique shell design as far as I can tell. And I like the paint job as well, the, the silver and the, the, the copper, the, the muted silver, not particularly shiny silver and the muted copper. I think they, they complement each other very, very nicely and the detailing that's done in there. And then finally, we have the another HFS Blasters. This is the Mark II and has not yet been named and it appears to be very, very similar to the Space Weasel, though the uh, shell work is a little bit different. The Space Weasel kept most of the gaps and the, uh, the, the angular look that you see with the end strike blasters and this one has clearly been rounded more using epoxy or whatever he used to fill it in uh, and it's given it a bit more of an organic look uh, and the, the detailing is a little bit different but it's a very similar concept which is you know what you get from a mark one to a mark two so I think these are absolutely beautiful and I, I hope my integrations get to this level eventually so up next we have a pair of pistols that were painted by Nerf Jaeger and I, I actually really like how they came out. The, in, the in general, all black, but then with a little bit of pink showing through. I, I like what he did there. And I really like what he did with the handle on the pink crush. Uh, I may actually try doing something similar to mine and seeing if that makes them fit my hands a little better, because they're just a little small for my big monkey hands. So I appreciate that idea, and I really like how these two look together. Next, we have two blasters submitted by Nerf Painter. The first is a nemesis that he has done uh, a iridescent green paint job on that apparently in the right light makes it look gold, which has got to be something to see. Uh, he doesn't have any particularly good pictures of that particular effect, but he does have pictures of the lights that he's put inside it. He's got lights in the front section that apparently uh, blink every one second, and so if he times it right, he can time his bursts to fire when it lights up, and he says it's a really neat effect. I wouldn't think it would be that difficult to set it so that they turn on on a trigger pull, um, and so it would always light up when you do the burst, but I don't know if, if whatever um, circuit he's using to create it currently might not allow for that, or you know, it might always be on that delay. Uh, but I thought that was a neat feature. And then he has a blaster that he calls Blinder, and it is a pistol that has, one, it's steampunk, as you can see, or kind of cyberpunk almost, really. Um, but then uh, it has lights built into it that can either strobe, flash, or just twinkle. So you can use it to uh, uh, disorient your opponent or just look pretty. So I think those are an excellent pair together. I think that would make a, a very fine loadout myself. Up next we have a submission by Gregory Benton, who has submitted before, and once again he does not disappoint. Um, he has built a, a Hyperfire integrated with a Boomco Halo Brute Spiker, uh, which gives it an absolutely fantastic cosmetic look, having those blades on the side, and having you know the Hyperfire's performance uh, is also pretty cool. Uh, for the most part he cut the uh, the, the, the spiker in half and uh, epoxied it, attached it on either side, did beautiful work with the, uh, the integration work, and then he also uh, has a picture of the internals so you can see you know, how he did the minimization, which is really well done. He, I like how he uh, filled in the, the gaps in the back with epoxy so that it's a, a nice smooth finish. Uh, it's a really nice touch. 
Up next, we have an absolutely magnificent uh, integration build made by uh, Alexander. Uh, this is Osmodius, and it was submitted as part of the Merge Masters 2 Myriad um, for, I believe, Reddit. And here is his write-up on it. Base Blaster is a hyperfire with a demolisher missile launcher under a long strike front end with modulus ECS-10 handle as extension of the rail. Lastly, apart from a proton as the housing for the voltmeter. I also filled in the cheek rest with resin to get a more solid heavy feel, covering the missile launcher handle with leather. Internal upgrades, Monkey Mods aluminum barrel, uh, worker metal flywheel cage, Michelle 2 motors, and artifact flywheels. Michelle 2 motor as the pusher motor as well. 18 gauge wire, Omron clone switches, green voltmeter connected to a stampede lock switch activated by magazine insertion. Nickel metal hydride 7.2 volt battery, all topped off with nine pink LEDs driven by a nine volt battery. And this thing is absolutely gorgeous. And seeing it on that gold brocade chair, I feel just truly shows it in its element. Not only is it a beautiful integration and uh, a huge variety of blasters used, uh, I like that it has the rocket launcher as well as being a very functional full auto blaster. I like that sort of addition, um, you know, that options. Um, but the paint job is absolutely gorgeous, and with the lights and all of that, uh, truly an excellent, excellent build. Up next, we have one of my favorite builds I think I've ever actually seen. Um, this was built by Zach, and here is his description. It is a bullpup rival chaos. I call it savage. Two-stage rival motors. Stage 1, 3S. Stage 2, 4S. Belt motor is on the 3S circuit to give you an idea of the rate of fire. Did I mention it was a bullpup? Uses a solenoid to create an electric mag release activated via the red button on the handle. Hydro dip graphics. Film is gold digger. 2K clear coat. Hop up tab has been turned in to compensate for the added velocity. Works flawlessly, accurate, and hits like a truck. And this thing is absolutely beautiful. And he was nice enough to provide uh, pictures of it in progress so you can actually see where the integration lines are before he actually fully painted it. He then sh sent a picture of it uh, fully primed and ready for the hydro dip. And he included a picture of the internals where you can see the two stages as well as how he did the solenoid, the solenoid mag release uh, and how where the batteries are housed. And it's worked. <laughs> Really, really impressive. And then finally, he's got the finished product again, uh, and it's um, anime hydro dip. Uh, it's of lewd pictures of women, but not nude. So they are somewhat tasteful and, you know, suitable for this channel, as long as they don't look too close, I suppose. But this thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, there will be a link in the description to his video on YouTube of him dumping two 40-round magazines in a matter of seconds which is facilitated by the fact that he designed his own Molly-compatible Chaos Magazine mag holders, which have got to be a huge and beefy thing, and if I had a Chaos, I would absolutely need, but I don't. So uh, there you have it. I believe they are available. In fact, I know they are available on Thingiverse. The link will also be in the description. Check this guy's stuff out. I need to check out his channel and see if he's got any more stuff, because if there's more stuff like this, that is going to be something worth, worth binging. Um, so, yeah, absolutely gorgeous, Zach. Absolutely beautiful work. Last but certainly not least, we have my favorite submission from this particular set. Not because of the impressive nature of the mods themselves, but because of the character of the submission altogether. This is Graham's HVZ loadout. And he said that he was into Nerf when he was younger, but then when he you know, got older, kind of grew out of it with other hobbies. But then when he got to college and they had HVZ, he got back into it. And I absolutely love what he's done with this particular motif. The paint job and the, the symbol that he's got, it's just an absolute gorgeous um, loadout in my opinion. I love the black and yellow stripes that he has on all of the items. I love the very cyberpunk, very post-apocalyptic um, motif that he's got going, you know, with the blood on the body armor, which is apparently just child's ho hockey armor, um, to the very... Uh, used and abused look that the, the paint scheme has. 
uh, which is partly, he says, due to the fact that he doesn't have anywhere to do really clean and fancy paint jobs, so he went with this one because it's what he could manage in his dorm room, and I think it came out looking absolutely fantastic. Let's talk about the blasters. The primary blaster is a lightly modified Strife. Uh, he didn't mention any internal modifications. It looks like he's removed the jam door, and he may have done some other things. Uh, it's got a Raider stock and a recon barrel, obviously. Um, and for HVZ, you really don't need a heavily modified blaster because it's done mostly at point-blank range, and a really high-powered blaster usually won't even be allowed at a lot of HVZs. Um, and even if they are, you're going to end up hurting people, and that's just not cool. So having a lightly modified strife is something I consider to be a very good primary, especially when it has uh, a master key like he's got here. Now, the main blaster is called uh, Haunt, and then the master key is called Abraxas. Uh, and he, I assume he named them separately because it is obviously removable. Uh, you take out the, the zip ties and you can just take the barrel off. So he, he gave them uh, individual names, which I definitely like. And I, I very much like his master key. Um, I've only done a Sledgefire master key on a Stampede, and I absolutely love how it looks here. I especially like the added uh, cosmetic work that he did using parts from a recon. He added a recon slide under the barrel, which I think squares it out fantastically. I don't know why I love how that looks so much, but I definitely do. And then the, the recon jam door is covering up the, the hole from the bottom of the handle that's been cut off. And then he actually used a, the trigger from the recon as the release mechanism to uh, release the barrel so he can reload. Uh, he also removed the shell ejection mechanism entirely because his primary uh, shell that he uses is a singled shell. And while I earlier said I don't generally approve of high-powered blasters for HVZ, having a, a secondary single-shot long-range blaster like that is incredibly useful. It's one of the reasons I built the air tank on Ire, because you occasionally run into super zombies that will keep their distance because they're either spitters or they're hive minds or they have some special ability that they don't need to get close to you to use. And so having a long-range option like this that's secondary is very, very useful. But he can still put a three-round shell in it, and he also has a mega shell for it. So he's used a sledge fire to create a, a, a master key that has three different and very distinct options. And that, in, to my mind, is, of course, modular and absolutely awesome. Uh, it's not as modular as, say, Iyer's attachment, but it's, I think it's much easier to switch between the options. Swapping out a sledge fire shell is going to be a lot easier than swapping out absolvers on, on Iyer's barrel. So absolutely love what he did with that, and I love the names. And then finally, he's got his secondary, which he named Hexameter, and is a lightly modified Kronos. He's pretty much just taken the, the, uh, the, the, the loading door off to make it a little bit easier to reload, but he then painted it up with the whole matching scheme, and I, I just absolutely love this whole loadout. Uh, it definitely has a very HVZ, post-apocalypse feel to it, and I love when people really get into HVZ like this. A lot of people don't, and if you don't want to, you absolutely don't have to. You can go and play casual, just you and your regular clothes with your, your Nerf gun, but you get out of HVZ what you put into it, and this guy's obviously put a lot into it, and I imagine he's having a lot of fun with it. Um, and he managed to do it without making it, you know, nearly as scary as, say, you know, me and the Black Knights look in our full black tactical gear, which from a distance, we, you know, we've had security called on us because we do look kind of scary. Whereas this, you're going to be able to tell from a distance, eh, I'm pretty sure that's a costume. So everything about this, I love the paint scheme, the, the names, the, the versatility of it all, because he's got rival, he's got regular darts, mega darts, multiple shot, long range, he's got it all. Uh, with remarkably few blasters. Um, so that, that's really, really impressive, and I absolutely like it. Good luck, Graham. Um, I expect tales from your HVZs. I want to hear about how your HVZs have done, how well you survived, great battles, great tags. If you get tagged, was it a, did you die valiantly? I want to hear about it all. So send me your stories about HVZ, and I may even throw them in a, a story time with Captain Xavier or something. So that is absolutely awesome. Everybody who submitted, I loved everything I got for the, these first 10 submissions. They were all very, very excellent. Very, very, j the huge variety. That's what I really loved about this episode is I don't think there's two of anything. There might be like, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. It just a huge variety. And this was just the first 10 submissions that I got. So having that much variety is absolutely awesome. You guys do some amazing stuff. There are ideas in here I'm going to be stealing, and I hope I remember to give people credit for it. If I don't, let me know, and I will apologize and give you full credit. So there you have it. If you want to submit something, 
uh, emails down in the description. I will try to remember to actually reply to people and let them know that I got it and that it will be featured eventually. Um, anyway, thank you again for all for your submissions, and thank you guys for watching. <laughs>